our efforts have helped set the stage for a historic opportunity, one that the world has today, to change the course of this pandemic and usher in an AIDS-free generation. We've seen our toolbox of interventions designed to prevent transmission of the virus expand dramatically. For the first 25 years or so, we really had a very small toolbox. But over the last several years, our toolbox of the interventions available to try and prevent the spread of HIV has expanded greatly. We now have medical male circumcision for uninfected men. We have antiretrovirals for uninfected people. And most recently, we have antiretrovirals as a prevention tool for those who are infected. Now that we have these tools, we've developed a model called the HIV Treatment Cascade. And what this does is helps us measure the types of services and the places in these services where we can intervene to optimize the effects of these tools. The cascade begins with every individual getting tested so they can know their HIV status, whether they're infected or not. And once infected, there are things we can do for people as part of HIV care and treatment that will allow them to both stay healthier and reduce their risk of transmitting. Number one, they have to get their diagnosis. Number two, they have to get referred to care so that they can get treatment. Number three, they have to stay on that treatment to keep the level of virus within their body low. And number four, we have to monitor that level over time to make sure the treatment is working. And at each of those steps, we have to ensure that as few people as possible are lost. One metaphor for this cascade is to think of it as four glasses. The first one is full of water. And our goal at the end of the four glasses is to have the last one as full as possible. So we'll pour the full glass into the second glass and there may be some that spills out. We'll pour the second into the third, some spilling, the third into the fourth, some spilling. And with whatever is left in that last glass is in fact the effective water we have to drink. The same thing works with the HIV treatment cascade. We start with all of those infected persons. We need to offer them testing to get them diagnosed, referral to care to get them services, treatment to get their viral load down, and further monitoring to keep their viral load down. And we would love everyone who's infected to have their viral load low. And we want to minimize the degree of spillage or leakage at each point in the cascade, just as if we're pouring water into sequential glasses. It's up to us, the implementers, to take these tools, use the cascade model, and achieve an AIDS-free generation. We're much closer now to it than we were 30 years ago.